Let's do this. Don Hickman, brother, thank you so much for joining me today on the Ridiculously Human podcast, bud. Yeah, pleasure to be here, man. Uh, I always appreciate anybody who's willing to reach out, get a conversation going, man. There's just nothing, nothing better than talking to internet strangers. I love it. <laughs> it's so cool, isn't it? Like, I mean, we just met each other on Twitter, literally, like, you know, like, well, I just started following you and then I like messaged you. I was like, hey, bud, you've got, uh, you've got such good energy about you and, and you know, your message and, and everything is so great. I'd, I'd love to speak to you. And I think it's just so cool how we can make mates uh, online, you know, and it's a, it's a cool little group and community of guys on Twitter that kind of egg each other on. Hey. Yeah. I was just talking, I just tweeted yesterday about, uh, I talked to somebody in Spain yesterday. Uh, of course I'm in the U S and in West Virginia. And uh, I just made a tweet yesterday about how uh, social media has really vastly improved my life. You know, I, I've got literally got friends all over the world. Um, and, and we talk daily, like, it's not even like, they're not, they're not even internet strangers anymore. Like I would, I, if I traveled, I wouldn't even think twice of staying at their house, putting my family up at their house. Like just the, I don't know, the internet, Twitter, this it, it's, it's really made the world kind of a smaller place, I guess. And, um, it really just takes away your excuses. Like, you know, um, for, for learning, like if there's anything you want to do in this world, reach out somebody across the globe. Like, I don't care if you don't have a, a direct network network physically reach out. There's somebody doing something cool that can help you uh, for free, probably even, you know, uh, just reach out, grow that network. It's, it's so cool. Yeah, no, it's super cool. But I mean, I, I feel like I've had this kind of love hate relationship with social media a little bit, you know, like you, you kind of hate the tech giants because they, they're taking all your data, <laughs> but then you love it because you can connect yeah. and, you know, you can also share like good messages, you know, and, and have a good influence on people. And I think that for me outweighs, I guess, the, the data side of things. Yeah, I sort of gave in to uh, the data side of things. I'm like, man, if I'm on the government list, I'm already on the list. There's nothing I'm going to do about it. I'm an open book. I'm going to say what I'm going to say and whatever it is. So, you know, you hate to feed the, the data machine, but uh, I don't know. I think the goods outweigh the bads and, you know, I'm connecting with people like yourself and people the world over, whatever, man, let's roll the dice. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. Um, I thought I would uh, start this a little bit differently. Like, and I think it's a, an award would be a good way to start this off uh, for you as the, the funnest dad ever. But, um, <laughs> I mean, if anyone takes a look at your feed at the moment, you're building this like ninja course in your backyard, which is almost like a, I don't know. It's like, three sort of American football pitches. It's so huge, <laughs> but it's, um, wow. But, uh, you have a sensational backyard there and that new ninja course looks amazing. Yeah. So the, the, the funnest dad, most fun dad, I don't know what's grammatically correct. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm a 38 year old child, right? Like I had a pretty good childhood growing up as, as far as I can remember. And I just remember as a kid, like how much fun I was having being a kid. And I was like, man, when I'm older, I just want to have fun, like on an adult level. And like, I'll probably have money to throw at these things, like the ninja course. Like I got money to throw around and build ninja courses. I got money to buy a bunch of dodgeballs and Nerf guns for all these kids and rent out gymnasiums and stuff. And I'm not like rich by any means, but I got enough money to do these things. It's important to me. So I'm going to do these things. But uh, yeah, I just remember, um, just remember wanting to play hard. I'm like, man, when I'm an adult, I'm just going to play hard and do like, it's just coming to fruition. And it's really cool because like, I feel like, I feel like I'm tuned in as to what kids want. I remember the things that were fun for me, like the, the nerf battles and dodgeball and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I, I sort of, I take it back, like, you know, churches put on these things like VBS, which, by the way, I'm getting involved in our vacation Bible school church. We'll probably talk about that later. But, you know, churches and schools and there's like these camps and stuff that will be put on as recreational activities for these kids. And I'm just like, I'm going to take the other side of that more than like crafts and sports. I think kids just want to go wild and throw stuff at each other and just just battle each other and just, you know, no rules don't hurt each other. But kids just want an outlet like like they just want a big room to just go crazy and and so i'm just trying to give that to them and and see what happens and um i'll tell you it's been nothing but positive um you know it's been it's been a positive experience you know um i do the family fun night thing you know every other every other friday 
uh, started as every Friday, but I had to back her down when I started renting a gym out because I couldn't swing every Friday. But every other Friday, I just get a bunch of kids and dads, and uh, it's summertime, so moms are invited too sometimes in the summer. Um, but uh, we just get everybody together, and uh, you know, my backyard because it's got a bunch of play stuff on it. We all just play. I run up the gym. We'll go to a playground, go to a park. We go to creeks and just catch stuff and all this stuff. We all just get together and just have a good time. And um, I tell you, based on the response, I hear from parents all the time, you know, Hey, my kid's asking if it's Friday yet. And I'm like, dude, that makes me so happy. Like, I just, I just love to hear, I just love to hear that kids want to come and have fun in like an unstructured environment that makes me happy. So like, I just feel like I'm in tune to the fact that, you know, they don't need so much organization and structure and all that. Like just to just, they're kids. Tell them they can go wild. They'll have fun. And, you know, the more kids you get, the more energy it is. They'll feed off each other. And, um, you know, and, and the other part of that, too, is the dads, right? So I'm bringing dads into it because I want to see dads get off the sidelines. Like a lot of times dads will think that, hey, I go to work and I work hard for my family and that's it. That's my role. Like I'm checked out, right? But like, no, I want dads to be fit and engaged. I want them playing with the kids. I want them wrestling with the kids, you know, and, and I get dads that come to this event. And um, a lot of times I look over, they ain't even playing with their own kids. They're playing with somebody else's kid. And I'm like, dude, this is, just, this is awesome. So everybody just gets engaged. And like I said, the kids are asking about it. And for, for dads, like, like it's so easy to just um, – get the kids out of the house. Like, like, it's kind of like, Hey, dads, you know, you are capable of getting your kids ready and bringing them to an event and keeping them safe and caring for them. Mom doesn't even have to be involved. Like she can stay at home, have the night off, which she probably needs and probably enjoy. Right. But, um, you know, it, it's about just, you know, letting dads know that you can take your kid out and, and I'm guilty of that as well. You know, I, I've, I've gone through phases where it was pretty much on mom. I've gone through all this. So I, that's why I know. Right. So I've been through where, where I kind of let mom do the events and entertainment and all that stuff. And I just suck along. I'm just like an extra body. It's like, no, 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 no. It's OK for, for you to put the pants on, get the kids ready, take a new event. They get hurt. You care for them. They can't run to mom. Mom's not there a lot of times. Like you, you handle it all. Let the kids know you're engaged and that you are uh, all about playing with them and a good time. Yeah, bad. I mean, it's such a it's such an important thing, isn't it? You know, having having that father figure there, having him, him present, um, teaching you a little bit like about like roughhousing and, and stuff like that, you know, kids need that kind of, um, yeah. play, you know what I mean? That's that, that sort of physicality, I think, um, especially in this day and age where it's like, you know, kids are addicted to their, their phones and, and, and everything else. And they, they really need that outlet, uh, because play is healthy, man. It's really healthy, but it's, and it's, you know, it's not just healthy for the kids, it's healthy for, for the, the family units. And um, I just think it's beautiful what you're doing and, and helping other fathers to, to get involved as well. Yeah, um, no, you're right. The play, we, we learn through play. We learn etiquette through play. You know, the, the rules, how far is too much? When am I going too hard? Stuff like that. And also, they, they need that outlet you know uh during during the year they're at school and stuff like that they need that outlet they've been sitting in a, in a class or staring at the screen like you said they need to just explode i tell you um i you, you see you hear about behavioral issues or whatever you can't sit still. yeah they're hardwired to move they're hard they play hard that's what they do and so i'll tell you when i started this initiative what i noticed was um like so this is on Fridays, that Saturday, that weekend, my kids behaved like angels, absolute angels, because they got all that nonsense out of their system. You know what I mean? You'll have, you know, on a, on a, on a day to day basis, your kids will be walking around, they'll be yelling, they'll be rambunctious because they're cooped up in the house, particularly over winter for where it gets colder and all that. Like they need that outlet. They, they just that's what they want to do, you know, so um yeah, it's it, it's really important, and then it builds that bond, like you said, between not just the not just the dads, but just the, the family in general. You know, mom, mom understands that uh, they're getting the rough housing in. Moms moms can't rough house like dads can, right? They they just they just need it. Yeah, for sure. I it's so cool, man, because um, I think our kids can be like great teachers for us. You know, so I, I've got a daughter. She's she's only just over one years old. Um, and man, she just loves going outside, but like in the garden, if, if she can get on the end of the host pipe, 
then she's like, daddy, turn this, you know, she doesn't speak yet, but she's like, I just know she wants that host pipe to be on, you know, and she's such a good reminder. She's been such a good reminder for me to realize like how almost conditioned I had become say for, you know, the last few years or something where I wasn't really playing, playing a lot, you know, where I wasn't like yes. getting dirty. Like, I mean, you know, it's almost like as adults who become, it's like, Oh no, I mean, I'm going to get full of mud. Do you know what I mean? It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> What's your problem? You know what I mean? Like, where did it all go wrong? It's crazy. They're such good teachers when it comes to those sort of things. Yeah, that's uh, that's something you see me encourage on Twitter all the time is let them let them be little. You know, so many parents will be like, oh, they, they can't play in the mud and I got to wash all the clothes or get wet, all this stuff. It's like clothes come clean, you know. OK, so you got to do a little bit of work, whatever. But, you, that, you know, it's a memory that's going to last just forever. So that's something I always encourage you. Matter of fact. Um, I say it all the time. Uh, my default is yes. OK, as a dad, um, you know, uh, we want to do X. Can, can we jump in the creek? But yes, if there's no reason to say no. No, the answer is yes. And the only reason to say no would be like, hey, we got somewhere to go or um, no, we're not dressed for that appropriately at all. Or whatever. Or it's dangerous. You know, no, you can't jump in the creek, can't swim, but whatever, whatever it is. Right. But if, unless there's a reason to say no, it's a yes for me. And it's cool because um my wife sort of adopted that too. I just sort of led that charge by example and she sort of adopted that too. And now I catch her saying yes all the time. It's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. I actually read that one and I, and I mentioned it to my yeah. wife and I was like, this is what we should be doing. You know, it's like, it's a, it's, it's definitely a yes. Um, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, man, keep, keep posting those things. Cause I think, you know, you have people that just, you know, maybe watch in the sort of sidelines and um, no, don't necessarily comment and stuff like that, but then they'll be like, Hey man, I saw this guy Don. Like, and he he reckons this, you know, and um, and so so the influence goes much further than than you probably even realize. But um, I want to, uh, I just want to. It was Father's Day recently, and I saw that you got uh, four parakeets, and it's <laughs> um, and it's it, you said it was something that you you've always like loved parakeets, and um, I was wondering if that's kind of like a a Mike Tyson kind of like love that he has for his pigeons that he's had, he's had his whole life. Is is that <laughs> along the same sort of lines as you? I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with Tyson's love of pigeons. I'm not familiar with that one. Um, but we had a parakeet uh, oh, years ago when my wife and I got married, we had a parakeet and it was so cool. It was, it was a very loyal animal. Honestly, it was like a, not a cat. They're not loyal for anything. Don't get me wrong. You know, dog. It was like a dog. I mean, thing would come to you. Like I could just scoop it up like this. I would, I would do this thing where I just like throw it and it just come back to me. Like it just loved to play all the time, sit on my head, pick food on my teeth. It was really cool. But um, yeah, so I always joked with my, with my kids. I was like, man, one of these days I'm just going to buy 40 parakeets. Like I just want to be a pet store up in here. And so here comes father's day and they surprise me. They give me this empty cage. I'm like, what, what is this? Right. And they're like, we want you to buy somewhere between three and five parakeets. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude. So it, it, and this is where I got to take my own advice. Like it dawned on me. I'm like, okay, these are animals, any animals, they're years and years of upkeep. You got to buy the food. You got to clean the cage. Somebody's got to take care of when you go on a trip. Like I understand there's obligations that come with animals, but I'm sitting here. I'm like, and, and my wife even said, she's like, I understand what an undertaking this is. I get it. So you're free to say no or yes. We, we understand both ways. And I just sat there and I was like, yes. <laughs> like, yeah, like let, let's do this thing, whatever, full send, right? Like, uh, let's just, let's get the birds. You guys bought this for me. I can't, I don't want to see disappointment on my kid's face. So let's go get the birds. So we went and picked out some birds. I picked out four parakeets. I couldn't couldn't decide on certain colors so i bought two gray and yellow ones i couldn't there was there's yellow with gray and gray with yellow and i was like i'm not really sure what so i bought i bought both so i got a green one a blue one and then two yellowish gray ones and whatever so i really enjoy them they uh they chatter all the time and i don't know i just i really i do like parakeets they're great <laughs> that's super cool but um i actually grew up um with with birds myself my my stepdad loved birds and then we just effectively got like parrots and love birds and budgies and stuff like that so i kind of know the undertaking that you've taken on that's for sure so <laughs> good yeah. luck with that but um, yeah we've got a love bird as well my, my uh, father has a african gray parrot it's cool because like they're not the traditional like it's not a dog or a cat it's sort of like a i don't want to say like a contrarian pet but it's a little bit off the beaten path so yeah it's kind of like me you know i'm a little bit off the beaten path 
So it, it kind of, how it goes. A classic, but so maybe we could just go a little bit back in your story. Um, I think you you grew up in in New York, if that's right. Um, yes. it's it sounds like you were a bit of an introverted kid. Um, yes. you didn't really partake too much in sports. You you said you you were maybe like a little bit chunky as well. I was just yes. wondering, like when you when you kind of like think back to those years and that little guy, like what what do you think? Sort of what memories does it conjure up? The, the biggest thing it conjures up is missed opportunities, okay? So I was introverted, had a hard time making friends. Uh, I, I guess I probably had social anxiety all my life, but never really pegged it. And, like, my parents probably never knew what was going on. They probably just thought, eh, kids are all different, whatever. This one's like that. He's like that. And no, it was, it was introversion and, and social anxiety and um, just really hard for me to make friends. And, um, you know, I look back. I look back at all that and yeah, I remember seeing all my friends playing sports and having a good time and whatever it was and people not afraid to stand up, speak out. You know, I remember class clowns and all that stuff. And I was like, man, I can never do that. That's just not me, all these things. And, um, you know, it, it flowed through to adulthood with me, the introversion, the social anxiety. And you know what? I mean, it, I see a lot of people with that same exact issue. So what I'm here to say is that um, what broke me out of that was having kids myself. We were at the playground, uh, one day, my kids were three or four and we were at the playground and I said, Hey, go play with the other kids. Right. And I can see that my kids didn't want to do that. They were just like, Whoa, Whoa, I'm not talking to strangers. And, and it, it just, something hit me like just, and I was like, you know what? They're not talking to strangers because I'm not talking to strangers. They're not playing with anybody because I'm not playing with anybody. Like, why should I expect them to do things that, number one, I'm not doing now. Number two, I didn't do as a kid. So I just sort of put myself in their shoes and I was like, holy smokes. I don't like talking to people. Um, but if I don't want my kids to be plagued with that same, I'm going to call it a weakness because it kind of is. It, hold, it held me back from a lot of opportunities as a kid. So I'm going to call it a weakness. Like if I don't want my kids to inherit that same weakness, I got to just get my crap together. I got to get over this. I got to be a different person. And so like literally that day, I just started that internal process of change. It didn't happen overnight. You know, I'm trying to come to terms freaking you know, years and years of, of introvert and social anxiety. So, but I, I did, I realized like I got to make this change. So I just started, started sort of putting in reps on, you know, I'm going to open up at the playground, I'm going to talk to a stranger or um, wherever it is, I'm going to spark a conversation. Um, you know, being involved in Twitter and men's groups and stuff like that has really helped because uh, you sort of meet people like you and people that have made that change. And you're kind of like, ah, you know what, that is possible. I don't have to let these past experiences define who I am and who I'm going to be. I see other people do it. I see other people being like, you know, outgoing and talking. I see other people living life on full send. I'm like, I want that. So, um, but having the men's groups and, and Twitter and, and seeing that and interacting with people and engaging with people, you know, they say, you know, you're the product of the five people, whatever you spend the most time with. It's like, well, and that's true. That's true. And it doesn't have to be physically. It doesn't have to be your own personal network. You know, you spend enough time on like self-improvement Twitter and shoot, you know, I'm not, you got to do the work. Don't get me wrong. But before you know it, you're going to start improving stuff. And so, um, yeah, just just sort of the online community. And uh, like I said, uh, I've been in a couple of in-person men's group events and stuff and, and being around people who are living life like you want to live. And you end up just putting in the reps and, and doing the work and um you know, I don't know a stranger anymore. I, I, I truly believe we meet every, everybody for a reason now. And uh, just what a, what a complete 180 degree turn. It's, uh, it's just, that's why I still, I'm still in disbelief. Like I, I done, I done broke out of it. We're good, but I still look, I still remember what that was like. And so, um, you know, for anybody who might be listening to this, you know, if you want to talk about that and need help with that, then shoot, reach out, we'll, we'll have a conversation. Like it's, it's possible to, to, to change, you know, from a social anxiety person, a little bit more outgoing. I mean, you, you make it sound almost quite easy, but, but I mean, that you're talking about kind of almost years and years of dealing with this, this, uh, sort of, um, trait, you know what I mean? And, and it, so, yeah, like, it sounds like, oh no, I just went and chatted to this bloke, but I can't believe it was necessarily that easy. You must have, must have taken a lot of courage and I don't know, like some other sort of things to, to actually get yourself out there. 
It, it is. It's sort of, well, it is and it isn't. It's, it's mission related. Like that day on that playground, it became my mission to not pass this trait on to my kids, right? And the same way it became my mission the day my, my son was born, like a light switch clicked in me and it just became my mission to give my kids the biggest shot at success in this life that I possibly could. You know, I'm here for them. I'm their role model. I'm the guy that's supposed to be, you know, forget about like schooling. I'm the guy that's supposed to be teaching them how to be a good human being. Right. And so um, if I wanted to give them every possible opportunity and good piece of advice and, and be a role model, I had to change me. You know, I, I've actually, I've heard it. I've heard it said that, um, you know, your kids will bring out the best in you. And I think that's absolutely true. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it was really, it, it was a small mindset shift, but it was big in that it, it became a mission to, to make these changes. And it, like I said, it wasn't overnight. It was a lot of, a lot of reps, a lot of talking to people. Um, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, they, somebody said that your, your social anxiety doesn't have to define you. You know what I mean? And, and that, that, and it was someone on Twitter or someone in the men's group or something like that. But that, that's when it really rang true to me. I'm like, oh, gosh, I've had this thing for so long, but it doesn't have to be my future. Like So so often we, we think that this is just our personality trait. Oh, this is just the way I am. And I'm here to tell you, like, I mean, maybe there's things about me that I don't even know I need to change or incapable of changing right now. But I'm just here to tell you and, and your audience that, man, you, know, you don't. There's things you could have pegged as hardline personality traits that you know, we, we can change if we want them bad. If you make that your mission and are willing to put in the reps, you can, you can make that change. It's almost impossible to imagine you being like uh, a bit socially uh, anxious and awkward. Um, it definitely doesn't no, I, come across, you know. I get that. I got to plug my uh, laptop in. I get that. It's hilarious because I'll meet people. Um, I'll meet people and uh, my wife will, will talk to them about, you know, Hey, he wasn't always this way and this outgoing. And they just, they absolutely can't believe it. And, you know, the reason I believe this because I live the life, but yeah, it is, it is wild. Cause of course I'm, I'm out of New York, but I'm in um, you know, West Virginia now. And so, you know, I meet people for the first time in New York and New York, whatever. Yeah, I meet people for the first time. And they just, it, it blows their mind that, that I would have been, um, introvert and social anxiety or whatever but um it's crazy like how did it impact your relationship like you know obviously your, your wife you know she'd got together with this sort of guy that was a bit socially you know anxious and then you you become this sort of uh really outgoing kind of extrovert guy like how did that impact your guy's relationship so it's really it's really funny because um she was more the outgoing person okay so she was forever dragging me to these events, parties, get togethers, whatever. We were younger. You know what I mean? There's a lot more events when you're younger, but, and, and I'd be like the weird one out in the corner or can't find somebody to talk to. And she'd always have to like, uh, sort of, uh, monitor me. Hey, you good. You good. Let me introduce you to such and such and all this stuff. And so when I finally broke out of that, like, she's like, dude, it is so nice not having to worry about you at functions. You know what I mean? Like, I know you're good. I know you'll find someone to talk to or whatever the heck. Like, I just don't have to worry that you're having a miserable time. Because I, I was always just, like, waiting to leave. You know what I mean? She's over there having a good time. It's her event. She's got all these people to talk to. And I'm just like, time to go yet. You know what I mean? But now, you know, now I've got, I mean, I got so many things that I'm working on and building. Like, I, I, I have so many things to talk about. I can relate to a lot of other people. And, you know, if nothing else, you can always talk about fatherhood and all these other things. Um that's something else I'm gonna say. Oh, the funny part is, is that actually, um, so our roles kind of are, are flip flopping now. Uh, she was a, she's been a stay at home mom for the last five, six years with our kids, and so she was sort of taken out of the workforce, and she she's been at home for so long that she is now sort of turning inward and like I don't know what's the like re recluse reclusing like the, you know she's she's a lot less apt to go out and do the things and talk to the people and all that stuff. And um, it's funny because we talk about it all the time, like we just completely flip flop. And uh, I don't know. It's, it's wild. Like, cause she's more, she's just so much more interested in just like 
staying home and taking care of the kids and making sure everything is good here. And I'm like, yo, let's go build stuff. Let's go do this. Let's go start a group. Let's build a ninja course. Let's get involved in the church. Like, let's do all these things. And she's just like, eh, pump the brakes maybe a little bit. You know, I'll get involved in one thing. You know, one thing. <laughs> so it's it's wild. It's it's just wild how those roles reversed. And uh, you know, like, yeah, no, that's cool, man. It's uh, well, it's definitely in your DNA. But uh, being from New York, that's for sure. To be sort of like out there and gregarious and stuff. Um, <laughs> but uh, you mentioned that you moved to West Virginia when you were, were twenty years old um you you i think you you followed your folks there uh, you also took like a long-term girlfriend um and effectively that didn't end up working out and then you pretty much hit rock bottom and you had to build yourself up again um uh, what did that look like what did that feel like you know what is that experience yeah that like? was yeah that was cool so I moved down here with a girlfriend didn't work out she moved back up to new york and i'm just sitting here with my parents uh you know 20 years old or whatever and going to school and um it was it was that point when I was like, holy cow, I don't have any friends here. I don't have, I don't have anything. I don't have a job. I don't have friends. I'm just going to school. And um, what's really weird, um, West Virginia can be a little bit clicky sometimes, hard to break into groups of friends or whatever. At least for are in West Virginia. But so it was just it was tough. And not now. Now we talked about it. I'm introverted on top of all this with the social anxiety, right? So like, <laughs> it wasn't looking good. So it was kind of then where I. Um, you know, I, I knew what I was doing. I knew that I was going to burn it all down and start over again, right? I, I knew that it was on me to make that change. No one's going to do that for me. And um, so at that point, uh, like you mentioned, I was a little bit chunkier growing up and what have you. And so at that point, I was like, I don't really know what to do or what the next right move is, but I know, you know, not nothing goes wrong if you just get jacked, right? Like if you just start getting into fitness, everything, everything improves. And I'm like, I can at least work on my image. I can probably make myself look more appealing to, to get more friends or whatever the heck it is. And it's like, so we'll just start, we'll just, let's just start with fitness. Right. And then, um, so I basically, I'm self-taught in fitness, read a lot of books I, way back when and books on nutrition and all that, and just started lifting and running and whatever the heck else I could think of that I thought right looked like. And, um, yeah, I ended up trimming down real low body fat and cut six pack and all that stuff. And, um, really just got, got to, got a, a level of self-respect, you know what I mean? Like I did something hard, you know, all my life I was a little pudgy or whatever. And it's like, man, we had a, a visible change and, and that was sort of the, was sort of the, I mean, that was, that was like the, the beginning of like the self-improvement right there. And then, um, I identified somewhere that I wanted to work here locally as a government agency I wanted to work at. And, um, I couldn't get on there because I didn't know anybody. And it's like a good old boys club. I didn't know anybody. And so um, I knew I had to go to school and get my accounting degree. And then even still, I couldn't get on. So I had to get my certified public accountants license. So I went out and did that. And, and this is just sort of the path I went on. All right, let's, let's nail down fitness. And then I see that career that I want. So I'm going to go after that. I'm going to go get that thing. And then I went down that path and then sort of... Um, you know, I ended up meeting somebody at the college when I was out there it was years in, but I ended up meeting my wife out there. And, um, you know, I, I knew I wanted a, a wife and, um, you know, just sort of put that in the card. So, um, yeah, just sort of visualized where, where I wanted to go and what that needed to look like and started going down that, you know, it's just, just, I mean, the, you know, the degree, the, the certified public accounts, like that's years in the making. You know, that's about six years it took me to do all that. But it's just that that every day you've got the end goal in sight and what's the next right thing to do. And um, yeah, I just started kind of forging myself into what I thought was, was going to be right. Because like the, the government gig and like the, uh, the CPA license, I was like, all right, I'm jacked. Now I want to be all right financially, right? I'm going to go get a good job. So I just identified like one of the highest paying employers in my area. I was like, I want to work there, right? And I'm like, All right, so what do I need to do? I need to get this degree, get this license, and get on in there. So yeah, just just you hit rock bottom and you you uh, kind of just make that mental image of what do I want life to look like? I mean, you start going after it. Right? It's so, so interesting, so like yeah. that. It, it's so interesting, like you you seem like you have this kind of like intrinsic motivation you know to to do things 
um, the, you know, going to speak to guys, you know, when you were sort of socially anxious, hitting rock bottom and then building your, your, you know, yourself up like through, through physical fitness and, and then, you know, getting your CPA and stuff like it almost, but it almost doesn't match like, you know, like the, the sort of the, the personality that you have. So it's a really interesting, like kind of dynamic there that you, that you found that motivation and that drive to do what you did at that, at the, in those times. Yeah, I don't, it, it's a weird, it is a weird sort of internal motivation. Like, I guess I almost, I almost have like an inferiority complex. I see people doing things better than me, bigger than me and all that stuff. And I'm just like, why not me? Right. And, um, you know, one, one day you, you kind of have enough and you're like, you know what, why not? Right. <laughs> like I, I want to do all those things and, and, and it bothers me. So, so I'll, if I'm being honest, it, it bothers me. Like, I wish I could do everything awesome. Right. Like it bothers me that a mechanic can fix things on a car that I can't fix. It bothers me that people can build a house and I can't build a house. And so like, I'm always just sort of chasing better if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, um, and that's, uh, that, that I make a lot of, uh, tweets there talk about like doing hard things like I've always known that like I don't like when people can do things that, that I can't do so I just go and do those things you know my car breaks I try to fix it myself you know my my dryer broke a couple of years back and I was like man I don't want to pay somebody like I'm also financially frugal right so I don't want to pay somebody to do this so I'm going to try to do that hard thing by myself I'm going to dismantle this whole dryer I'm going to fix this whole thing you know um, ninja course that I'm building it's like I'm Nobody else knows what the heck I want. I got to build this thing. So you just sort of, and that's, you know, sort of become one of my mantras on, on, on Twitter is, you know, do hard things, challenge yourself. And um, that's, that's sort of just my, my self motivation is, is I, I like to, I like to be confident. I like to be capable. And I, I literally believe like at some point when I was, you know, burning it all down and rebuilding, I, I just had, had that thought like i literally can do anything i want to do I, I, like anything i want to do i can research it i can learn it and because i've always been good at school i've always been you know uh, very good at memorization and school and all that stuff and and um i learned how to learn we'll say it that way right i was very good at learning so it, it finally clicked and i was like dude i literally can learn and do anything i want in this world and so i just you know anything um like I said, anything I wanted to do, anything that broke, anything I wanted to build, and just, you know, I, when I wanted to launch a website, it's just like, I, I, I have a hard time paying somebody for something, and then I don't know how it works, and I got to continue to pay if something breaks, and then, you know, people have access to my wallet, you know what I mean? They, I, I'm reliant on somebody else, so yeah, we'll probably talk about that too. I'm big on self-reliance and sovereignty, but like, I just like to know how to do things myself, um, so Basically, uh, yeah, anything I can do myself, I at least try. Um, and uh, that, to me, that makes a valuable person. You know, I, I say things about that all the time. I never worry about losing my job or anything like that. I'm a valuable person. I've, I've learned how to do so many different things that I could care less if I lose my job. I'm valuable. I can do things. I find something new. I think that's really cool, but and uh, I mean, I, I think that we maybe like were separated somewhere along the line at birth because I, I'm the same, but when it comes to doing things, like I want to know what I'm doing, you know, like I want to learn how to do it, you know, maybe yeah. somewhere down the line, I will get somebody to, to do it for me, but, but at least when they do do it, they're not going to be able to stuff me around because I'll be like, well, I kind of know that this like goes here or that you have to do this. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, I yeah. think it's a good thing to be able to know a little bit about it. Otherwise you can cheap as you can get ripped off badly by people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I call it, uh, I call it staying curious too. You know, so many people are just, they, they, they don't want to learn. They just want to pay somebody to do the thing. And, you know, you got to stay curious. As a matter of fact, just the other day, I had a brake line break on my truck and I didn't fix it myself. But I went under there and I saw what it would take to fix all that myself. And I was like, man, somebody with a lift could do this a lot easier than I can do it. But I went and I investigated and I YouTube and I found out what it would take to replace all that. So at least I knew. Right. So at least I knew I didn't feel incapable. But yeah. Yeah. No, there's times to outsource stuff. And um, 
know, but but I like you, I just want to know how it works. And you know, part of that is because like like you said, they have access to your wallet, they can rip you off now. And you're like, no, I want to know what what everything entails. Maybe I don't need to know become a master, but I just need to know a little bit. Yeah, it's funny you should share that. Yeah. And you also mentioned like somewhere that's uh, like sort of overcoming your sort of like anxiety, introversion and stuff. You, you, you sort of stop caring what people thought. Um, like how easy or difficult is that for, you know? So that's, um, wow. I used to take things really hard, really personally. I couldn't take criticism at all. Like it hit me to the core. Um, but I don't, I don't know where, I don't, I don't know where I saw it or how it developed, but I've come to um, almost this flow chart where, you know, somebody says something negative to you or about you and you go to the flow chart and it's like, okay, does their opinion carry any weight? Do you care what they think? And it's like, if no, okay, reject it. It, it doesn't matter what they think, right? I think some of that has to do with confidence too. We'll talk about that here in a second. Remind me. Um, but then you go, you know, if the flowchart says, yes, that they, 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 their their opinion does matter to you, you know, you go to the next thing. Is this valid? No. If not, you throw it out. Just discard it move on. If it is valid, you, you always got to say, well, well, do they have a point? Like, I do care what they think. Do they have a point? And if they do, do I need to adjust my behavior a little bit um, or no? You know, is it, is it unwarranted? So if you do, you know, adjust your behavior, move on and, and do it again. Because, I mean, I think all feedback's valuable. I love feedback. I love criticism, love feedback. It's all valuable. You know, I mean, bullying, shaming, everything, all that exists for a reason. Somebody's trying to correct your behavior, right? So if somebody's picking on you, giving you negative feedback, your boss, whatever, listen to it. They're trying to tell you something, right? So don't take it personally. Um, I was going to circle back on something. What was confidence. It? Con confidence, confidence, confidence. Yeah. Um, after after doing you know hard stuff that I call it after um, after I found out like I was like in my thirties and I realized you know this whole life thing this life that I built like it's working like you know I do do good financially do good fitness wise in a good place spiritually all these things marriage is good it's like this thing's working like so it it um it just sort of dawned on me that like doing things right. I guess I don't want to sound egotistical, but I'm just like, you know, I, I think I got to handle all this thing. Cause like in my early thirties, the weird part in my early thirties where I was like, am I doing this life thing? What is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And then you got friends that are like getting like divorced and stuff and you got the world crumbling around you and you just sort of, and then like, like I get different jobs and I look around and maybe people aren't performing or you go to the stores, you could, people are little, like employees that are lazy. And I'm just like, no, I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm, I think I'm doing this thing called life right. I think, I think this works. And so it just sort of like, it, it, it gave me a little bit of confidence and, and, and assurance that, you know, the, the things I'm doing are right. So um, it, it gave me less care about detractors, right? You know, it, it gave uh, less, less thought to uh, less paying mind to uh, negativity and all that stuff. So, you know, um, I don't know how you summarize that, but I mean, you know, you do it, do enough things, right? And one, one, at some point you're going to realize, Hey, I think I'm, I think I am actually doing this thing. Right. And I don't care what the critics say. That's, that's my response to that. Yeah. It's, it's, I was actually speaking to this uh, really interesting lady um, a few weeks ago. <clears throat> She's a behavior change expert. And one of the things I, I don't know it, that just came up, which is in line with what you're saying is like, I, you know, it feels like in society at the moment that um, there is almost like a lack of confidence, you know, and, and people kind of believing in themselves and that society is effectively, effectively a reflection of that, you know, and um, that's why that you, you have, um, you know, these kind of ideologies, I guess, and, um, and those sort of things, which are kind of like quite toxic. And uh, that's because those people, they don't believe in themselves. They, 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 they they don't have anything to believe in. And um, that, that's, I guess, quite linked to confidence. So, um, yeah, it's such a it's, strong trait. I think it's confidence and the lack of mission that people are experiencing, the lack of purpose. So um, I'll tell you, I have to, like, I'm a very, nowadays, I'm a very optimistic and authentic person. And I have to check myself regularly because I'm getting like detached from 
reality, the, pe the normal people who are more um, negative and maybe behaving and saying things to, to fit in and, you know, nothing, they just want to, they don't want to break out of the mold or be themselves or say what they need to say or whatever it is. And, and I think you see that, you know, like you said, all over the place. I see so many, so many people like that, that are just, they don't want to be seen as extreme or outside the norm. They just want to be accepted and all that stuff. And so, um, um, I, I saw, I, I literally had an incident. I don't want to talk about it. Really. It's a kind of a personal issue, but today where, where, uh, somebody was like off put by positivity and authenticity and people are like normal people in the world. A lot of people are just off. Put. They don't know how to respond to it. It's it scary and foreign to them when somebody speaks their mind um and it's just outgoing and, and and positivity like everybody is uh obsessed with like the negative news cycle the world is crumbling everything's dark or they want to see the bad in everything like it's just so unusual to meet other positive people and then you know especially when, you, when you're being a positive person you need some resistance it's interesting that you how people want to kind of bring you down to kind of their level, like their level of like yes. unhappiness almost. Yes. You know, they're like, I'm unhappy. I want you to be unhappy too. So, you know, stop being such a positive bastard. <laughs> it's so crazy, but really yeah, crazy. But the, the uh but the hard part is is like I I you know, I, I was caught in a doom loop, I call it a doom loop for a long time. Like when I, in, I don't know, maybe 2013 when I sort of learned how the world works you know corrupt politicians central banks run the show all these things and you know you, you just sort of question everything right but um I got, I got a little bit obsessed with the, the the negative news and the world is ending and you know currencies are going to collapse stock market is going to collapse and it was just unhealthy to to be in that place and um uh I didn't really have a, a lot of hope for change either uh, until I had kids. And I was like, shoot, dude, this world's a disaster and I'm raising kids. As a matter of fact, I didn't want kids. Dude. I'll be honest with you. I didn't want kids uh, uh, at first. And then um, because of this world that we're bringing kids into, I'm like, this world's garbage, yada, yada. And then I was like, wait a minute. This is why I have to have kids. This is my chance. Like, this is my chance to raise awesome human beings and see, you know, what I can do to be a uh, example and a lighthouse in this world. And so that's the point I wanted to make is that it takes so much, um, what's the word, like uh, determination and grit to just stay positive and stay authentic every single day so that you can sort of show people what you think right looks like. And, you know, you're going to meet a lot of resistance on a daily basis, but just like you said on Twitter, you don't know who you're affecting. Affecting. you know you don't know who you're affecting in the supermarket or church or anything like that you know somebody runs into somebody living life on full send and you know a couple people out of out of however many you meet are gonna be like i want that i want to do i want to do that i saw the way that just just like i did back in high school i noticed how people were living they weren't you know uh beat down with this introversion social anxiety lack of confidence or whatever like you can see people living like that and you just sort of got to decide that i want you know, i want that for myself it's almost like i call it like escape in the matrix you just like i I want that for myself. And and you do uh, sort of what I did when I was building. You identify what you want and then you just one foot in front of the other and you make that happen. Do you have any like daily kind of routines or tools or anything that you sort of do to, to keep up the positivity and optimism? I don't know that I have any routines. I mean, I definitely exercise a lot. That helps get the uh, dopamine or whatever, you know, uh, feel good hormones. Um, other than that, I don't, I don't know that I do anything daily other than open my Twitter and get punched in the face with positivity. <laughs> I do Twitter. I, 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 today I woke up real groggy and, you know, I got that community of Twitter and, and, you know, I'm not a big account by any means, but I've made some awesome connections and, you know, I just wake up to people slaying their days and stuff like that. I'm getting after this. I'm getting after that. And I'm just like, man, all these guys are getting after it. I'm like, I better you know, within 30 minutes of me waking up groggy this morning, I was like hitting the ground running, you know, lighting fires. I'm like, dude, I, this, that positivity is contagious. You know, if you just open up and be receptive to it, it's so contagious. So, I mean, really, um, I don't know, that, that's really, I don't really have any uh, 
solid routines other other than you know i got that mission of being an example so i want my kids to see me being positive i want my kids to see me upbeat i want i want my kids to see their daddy's energy i want to see them how much i you know i want them to see i love my wife like that's just I don't know. I, I, I think the example I want to be for my kids is, is what keeps me going every day. And then, uh, you know, Twitter's over there to light a fire in the end if I get tired. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, you, you touched on, um, you like initially never wanted to have kids. Um, and then, um, going down those kind of like dark doomy loops, uh, yeah. almost was like, no, hang on a second. If I want to have a good influence in this world, then I need to you know, at least one of the ways I can do it is, is by having kids and raising, you know, good, strong, moralistic, I don't know, spiritual, faithful, you know, children to have a good influence in the world. Um, what advice have you got for, for, for men that you know, are kind of in that, that mindset where they're like, they don't want to have kids. And, and I mean, I know people have it for different reasons too, you know, like they're like, I don't know, they, they, it's almost selfish. I think sometimes, you know, because I can relate, like, I think, 10 years ago, I don't think I really wanted to have kids, you know, because I was like, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to travel as much and I'm going to have to, you know, sort of give up certain things and whatnot. And then fortunately I met my wife and, and she was like, you know, dead keen to have kids. And then, you know, we, we now have this beautiful, amazing daughter and I can't imagine ever not having kids and like the lessons I've already learned from her within one year. So like, I'm like, you must go for it, men, like just flip and have, have kids, you know, but what advice have you got for, for guys that are like, kind of like maybe sitting on the fence or, or not necessarily don't necessarily know if they want or not. I mean, obviously I recommend it. I, I think kids are absolutely awesome. And my wife and I question all the time, like, should we have had an army of children? <laughs> like, <laughs> we, should, well, why did we stop it too? But, um, uh, the answer to that is I'm going to just mentor the crap out of a whole bunch of different kids. Like that's kind of, that's kind of the goal behind my fun nights too, is like to just be a part in, as an adult in a whole bunch of kids lives such that when they grow up, they, they know they can always call on or whatever, you know, out late drinking, get bailed out of jail, whatever, just run them advice, call on. You know what I mean? So that's sort of my, that's my answer to having an army of kids. Like, you know, but there's people out there that have a lot of kids. Um, that, I don't think having a lot of kids was for us, but you can still affect positive change through mentoring, you know what I mean? Uh, being a good uncle or whatever it is you need to be. But no, to the to the guys um, that are on the fence, I mean, if you know dead set, you don't want them at all, like you probably don't have them. You're probably not going to be a great dad. I'm not going to lie. But if you're if you're on the fence, um, I will say this, and, and we, we talked about it already, and they have made me a version of myself that never, ever, ever would have existed. And it is fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you're along those same lines as I am, like, hey, the world's a, a dark place and you know, I want to raise kids in here. No, no, same as I said, like that, that is your hope. That is your shot to um, affect change because like, it's like this, like your, your kids, um, your kids grow up, they go through school, they have all these friends. Like, that's just a massive network. That is a massive network of people you can reach. And, um, you know, they've got friends, they've got their parents and all that stuff. And just like I'm doing with like the, the Friday night thing, like anyone can do that. Anyone can affect positive change in their community um, just by, by getting involved, having their kids. I mean, you can do it other ways. If you really don't want kids, you can go volunteer or whatever it is. But I'm telling you, kids is like a cheat code for getting involved in all that stuff. Um, I had one other point that I lost. What 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 has been your like greatest lesson as a father? Greatest listen? Lesson, sorry. Lesson, lesson, lesson as a father. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what the greatest lesson is. I really, I really don't know. Um, I would say I would say lead by example, probably is the biggest one. Um and that carries over into other aspects of my life as well. Um, you know, I volunteer on my, my church council and I've literally just told somebody today that you have to lead by example because, you know, we're all volunteers or maybe you volunteer somewhere else. You don't get paid. And a lot of times it's easy to, to, to not give your all to that thing because you're not being compensated or whatever. But I got to be the one leading the example. I got to, I got to build solutions. I got to um, resolve all these problems. 
so that other people can see that and know what that looks like and be like, oh my gosh, he's giving it all. Why aren't I? You know what I mean? And so um, the Elite by example has been just just so powerful. It is probably like, you know, it's a lesson I learned and it's probably the biggest piece of advice I would give to every single parent out there is to just lead by example. Like you cannot, you cannot expect um, your kids to turn out or do things that you're, you're not doing yourself. So again, in that same vein, like, they've made me a version of myself that I couldn't learn from the fence. You want to be the best version of yourself. You can have somebody watch you all day, every day and copying your behaviors, right? Like you're going to whip your butt into shape real fast when you understand that, that um, you're putting out a product that is you, right? And so if there's doom and darkness in the world, put out a product that is light, you know, be a light yourself, put out a product, put out children that are lights. I mean, that's the way we beat this thing. I really like what you said, um, that when you have kids, you have a stake in the future. And I think that's such a cool. That part, that part. Yeah. That's such a cool, like almost one liner. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I'm actually pretty optimistic about the future, you know, and I, and I have to be as well because I do have a stake in it now. So it's a great line. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you're going to have kids and the world's a dark place, whatever. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do to make that world a better place? What are you going to contribute? You know? And so, um, yeah, I'm just out here building stuff and trying to make the world a better place, being a lighthouse. You know, I'm trying, I'm out here on Twitter, trying to reach other men, uh, help them uh, improve, getting dads engaged on Friday nights and stuff. And it's just like, man, the, the, the world is kind of a dark place, but what can we do to brighten it? You know, so that's, that's really, uh, that's, pretty much a daily a daily question i ask myself you know, what can i do yeah what well, one of the things that um i guess is tough for people is um you know in in relates to what you said is like almost having tough conversations you know like sometimes you have to have tough conversations if you want to change the world and you you wrote um something on your twitter about like you know uh i think it was the inability to talk to people uh, is a weakness um, you don't have to like it, but you should definitely be able to do it, right? So what advice have you got for people uh, when it comes to tough conversations? Because I, I, I truly believe that communication is like the most important thing in the world. But most people will kind of like balk at the idea of uh, having a tough conversation and um, and just avoid it, you know? So, but but that gets you nowhere, doesn't it? Yeah, so two things. Um Number one, bad things don't get better with time, right? Uh, and that situation is probably not going to resolve itself. Um, that was the second thing is like, if you want change, you have to speak that up. I think that they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know, whatever's making the noise is the thing that's going to spark some change or you're going to give that grease to that wheel. Like, like, how can you expect change if you're unwilling to communicate? I know you get it. If you said communication is big, communication has always been huge with me um you know how can you expect that change it, it's it's like uh you know it, it's like in your workplace your boss will come and tell you, you did something wrong but they never told you what right looked like it's like well how you just put your hands up in the air and you get frustrated it's like well how was i supposed to know um yeah but that's uh you know you see i've seen a lot of weak um you know bosses managers whatever that they they just they want change to happen, but you can almost see it in their face. Like they want to say something, but they just won't because they're just not confrontational. Um, and so the, the ability to say the hard things, I think historically, I probably would have avoided the hard conversations too. But when I made that shift in my head to like the feedback, we talked about feedback and criticism and it's all good. Once I started understanding that that feedback needs to be said and it's a good thing uh, that made it easier for me to have a tough conversation with somebody else and you know you can maybe tell sometimes that people aren't aren't as receptive as you are to maybe negative feedback or whatever it is but you know um if i take everything as constructive criticism uh, and i know the value in that and i want to hear criticism i know the good in it right i know the value of criticism 
I'm almost doing myself a disservice if I don't pass on criticism to somebody else because they're going to go on repeating that same mistake. And whether it affects me or not, maybe it affects them and somebody else or some, you know, whatever, but you're almost doing a disservice by, by not saying that. So um, a couple things there, just if you understand the value of that feedback. And, and, and once I identified that it was feedback is a good thing. And I say I'm undefendable. Like if, if you get to a, a place in your head where um, – you understand the value of that feedback and, and you weigh, like you said, people's negative opinions and, and you realize that not everybody's opinion matters. You might be able to lose opinion weight, maybe you're not even right. Once you understand that not all that all that is valid, if but it is valid, you should take it into consideration. Like it just helps you receive it. And I think also also give it. You understand the value of that feedback. So um yeah, I guess that's my thought process. And, and in your relationship, like how do you like uh, have tough conversations with your wife um they uh <laughs> i sort of take my own advice and they don't get better with time and i'm sort of a, a blunt instrument there there's really no tiptoeing around it i'm you know i'll just approach it like uh you're not gonna like this but i gotta say it and here we go like that's just the way it is but the key is i'll tell you the key right now is communicate ahead of time so that you don't have to have that hard conversation i if anything i'm an over communicator um i i make it very clear what my expectations are like particularly on a day like if we got like a weekend or something like that i will be very clear about what my direction my goals my hopes for the day are and then i'll ask her what hers are so that there's no surprises oh i just assumed you were gonna x you know what I mean? Whatever it is. And so that's, that's, I think my, my, my advice on the hard conversations is communicate beforehand. So you don't have to have the hard conversations. You know, and like you said, I, I think you get it. You understand the value of, of communication. Um, air, air on the side of over. That's what I would say. Cool. I like that, but uh, one of the, and, and just like, sort of like, you know, almost touching on that. like you, one of the cool things that you guys do as a family is you, I think it's every Sunday, uh, m maybe not every Sunday, but you, you sort of sit down and you talk about like, cool. How was I as a dad or a family? Like, how are we doing? That's that communication. I'm an over communicator. And like, I understand. Yeah. But we, so we, uh, periodically, it's not, it's not religious, like every Sunday religiously, or periodically, anytime I'll, I'll just look around and be like, Hey, we're all together. They all seem to be in pretty good moods. Family meeting, boom. All right, let's do this, right? And so I just asked the kids, um, you know, how am I doing as a dad? How's how's mom doing? Is there anything that we're doing that you like or don't like? Is there anything we do pretty regular that you want to discontinue? Like, you know, just let, open open forum, you know, whatever it is. Now, there's there's sort of a like I'm interested in my feedback. Yes, I am, but there's sort of a back, you know, there's another side of that coin is that that opens the door to give you the, the feedback to them. And they understand that, hey, uh, I'm being seen and heard, so maybe I should see and hear my parents. You know, and at that time when I'll be like, all right, you need to try more foods. <laughs> Bedtime has been horrible for like the last month. We've got to fix that. And, you know, it just gives you, it just gives you an opportunity to, uh, to be seen and heard yourself. So, I mean, I, so simple. But kind of brilliant and i don't know where i don't know where i picked that one up from, from twitter or something like that but I, I don't know i don't know where a lot of these come from but and i hope you know i hope people steal this you know i stole it from somebody i hope somebody steals it from me like just just get it out there it's an awesome strategy you know kids kids love nothing more than to be seen and heard you know a lot of times kids will act out if they're not seen and heard. this gives them that chance to be seen and heard I think it's amazing. And it's, it's also like a cool skill almost that you, you know, you're teaching them like to, to carry on into other parts of their lives, you know, to, to maybe speak up for themselves and to, uh, you know, to tell people that, that things are not going well, or, you know, even to receive feedback, I think, you know, and criticism and stuff is, is difficult. So those are great. It's like, it just, you know, sort of flows into all those other parts of your life. Yeah, yeah, I straight up stole that stole that strategy. So I'm on a couple boards. I'm on a board of a local credit union and my my church board. And uh, legit, I've used that strategy. And I'd, I'd say to the uh, manager, CEO, whoever it is, because I'm on the board, so I'm technically over them. 
say, hey, you know, hey, is there anything I or the board can do better? Right. And it's just it's all that works so well in a workplace or a, a situation like that. Like, just ask people if they can do better. Like, we all want to be as happy as we can, you know what I mean, in our daily lives. So just go ahead. You know, it, it doesn't have to be your kids. Ask, ask your wife if there's anything you can do. It. Ask somebody, you know, ask your boss. You know, you don't have to wait for your annual review to get good news or bad news or whatever it's going to be. Just randomly ask, what, what can I be doing better? Look. Everybody appreciates the opportunity to be seen and heard. Um, and particularly, you know, maybe maybe somebody's waiting to have a tough conversation with you, but, uh, you know, better do it on your terms and open that door and say, hey, you got anything for me? So, yeah, no, that's a strategy I've definitely taken out of the household, and I love it. Yeah, that's great, bud. Um, I think, you yeah, know, many people could could benefit from, from that sort of strategy. Uh, one of um one of the things like I think it's almost like a pillar of yours in your life. Uh, you talk about like finances and how important it is to kind of get those in order. And and it's it sounds like you know you've obviously got your finances and stuff in order. Um, also think people don't necessarily speak about money like enough, but like in a good way, not like in a showing off way. You know, uh, what are what are some like maybe bits of advice or wisdom that you could share with people to you know, just allow them to, to create a bit of a, a nest egg and, and create a bit of wealth and find a bit of comfort, um, you know, with money. So really I got my start just, just being frugal, you know, delayed gratification. You know, you don't got to keep up with those Joneses. You do you. And once like, I remember being a kid and I, I established like a $1,000 savings fund. And I mean, I thought I was the man. Okay. This is before inflation and all this stuff. But that was a lot of money. But it, it, it allows you, if you can get that savings fund, that emergency savings fund going, that allows you to live so much differently, okay? So, it, you know, as an adult, maybe I'd say five ten thousand dollars $10,000, six months of expenses, what, whatever that amount is for you that would make you feel comfortable, get that saved. I don't care what it takes, you know, forego some expenses or sell something, whatever it is, work some overtime side hustle, I don't know. Get that saved. It, it allows you to live life on your terms. And um, you know, I even hate talking about the pandemic and whatever the heck. But if you were a person that didn't want to take that shot, or or it doesn't have to be a shot. Maybe your boss asks you to work a weekend that you just don't want to. You don't want to work. That gives you the ability to say no. You don't need that thing, right? You've got a lifeline outside of that one job that that you can rely on to get you through the next six months or whatever it is. So like, it, it's just. That, that principle of like sovereignty, that, that it gives you the ability to say, no, I don't want to do what you're asking and I don't have to. So, um, but that, I just, it's hard to overstate. I can't overstate the freedom that that gives you. You, you just get to, you get to live a little bit more on your terms. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know how, how I would say make that happen. Like I said, I've, I've always been extremely frugal. Um, you know, save, even saving money on repair bills. Like I said, I try to do everything myself. But um, I do believe that it is every man's responsibility to maximize their earning potential, okay? We've got a central bank that is devaluing uh, currencies all over the world by printing money, okay? It is your job as a man to maximize your earning potential such that you don't get caught in a trap where a central bank says, hey, by the way, overnight we devalued your money, so <laughs> now it's going to be a lot harder to feed your family. Good luck with that, right? You should be, I believe you should be, you know, at your current place of employment. You should be seeking promotion. You should always be looking for other opportunities of employment. And, you know, uh, I understand it's very easy to fall into that comfort zone, that, that complacency. Yeah, hey, I know what I got here. They give me enough to get by. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm always looking for something else that will compensate me more or what have you. Yeah, there's risk there. There's risk there. You know, you know what you got to say if it's going to Oh, I'm always looking for stuff, you know. And if, and if you don't want to leave your job, look at improving your skill set. Ask your manager, hey, again, there you go. What can I do better? What can I do to take something off your plate? What would be useful to this organization? How can I, you know, how can I break into uh, another division? How can I move up? All of these things. There's always something you can be doing to improve your skill set. And I mean, I think of even just the stuff we've talked about earlier, fixing, fixing a dryer, building a ninja course, uh, fixing your own car. Like, you know, these are these are things that, no, you're not a master at, 
But if you walk, if you lost your job because you said, I don't want to take the shot or I don't want to work this weekend, you lost your job, you could at least walk into your local mechanic shop and say, you know, I know what a piston is. I know what a rod is. I know what an axle is. I know what these parts are like. And I'm trainable. You can at least say I'm trainable and I'm willing to learn and I can do these things. And that's valuable as a human being. You know, even, even if you want to talk to your manager or apply for another job, I always advise people, let them know you're trainable and you want to learn new things. Like, like this whole post-pandemic world is like, I don't know, nobody wants to work. I don't know what it is, but everybody seems like they're shorthanded or whatever. I'm like, go in a completely unrelated field, unrelated job. Just tell somebody you're willing to learn something and you're going to show up all the time. There's power in that. So um, I, don't, I, I think uh, to, to your point, I think we should always be learning. We should stay curious. We should always be learning uh, skill sets. You know, crypto, all that stuff's really popular, up and coming. I think that's going to be in the future. It don't even take a whole lot to learn that stuff. I'm going down some rabbit holes in that. And it's a pretty basic concept when you get into it. But if you want to dive deeper and get into encryption or uh, coding or anything like that, that's easy. Like, I don't know. Just stay curious. Go learn something. That's that's really all I can say is, is no, 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 no. The way become valuable that's how i want to say it that's what i want to say is become valuable um, whatever that takes to become valuable and solve people's problems you know it's something they don't teach you in school um they don't teach you that in school they, they teach you to uh they teach you a skill set right but they don't necessarily say you know people aren't necessarily going to hire you for your skill set they're going to hire you based on solving problems if you can learn how to solve people's problems whether it's in this skill set or not, you're gonna be fine on money. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be, you're gonna be just fine. So, if you learn how to solve people's problems, become valuable. I mean, just become valuable. That's my biggest. One of the things that I love about doing this podcast is that I literally get to witness people like thinking and speaking, obviously in real time. You know what I mean? And and it's it's such a cool thing to do. And and just seeing you there now, you know, you you saying be curious and that's what I think and then you're like no 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 be valuable and like so it's it's really cool just being able to witness that and um you know so so thanks for like you know just the way you express yourself and and how you think on your feet I think it's a it's a really great skill um so so that's awesome man uh just I wanted to briefly briefly touch uh, before we sort of like start finishing off like uh, something you also talk a bit about is prepping, right? And, and prepping is like almost deemed like, right, this looks a little bit crazy, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, I think it's a, it's a really sort of almost important thing for people to consider. Um, what do you do like in terms of prepping? Um, so I've got a whole, I've got like a 55 gallon drum of water. I mean, it's hard to talk about these things. So you want to stay the gray man, right? You want to, you don't want to tell people you're pressed, but yeah, I got water on hand. I probably got enough, um, like that camping freeze dry food. I probably got enough of that for almost a year. Um, I bought canned because I wrote an article on, um, back in FY20, uh, I say FY for the book, back in 21, um, I wrote an article and put it on Twitter. And um, there's an article I wrote called Preparing for the Upcoming Inflation. And in that, I gave a bunch of steps on what people can do and what I was doing. Because I saw inflation. I've, been, I've always been, you know, I'm in accounting and I, I don't know, I find financial stuff. And like I said, I found out how the world really works and the banks and all that. I, I saw like inflation coming a mile away and a lot of other people did. You know, I would watch a lot of YouTube videos. But, but um, so I wrote an article on, on the things I was doing. And one of those things was like, you know, canned goods and just perishable goods. You know, I said, buy them today now because they're going to be more expensive in the future and so that's one thing i, I laugh right now uh i had somebody over the other day in my basement and they saw some some of canned goods and they were kind of questioning them. and i said yeah that's that's canned meat right there i said i bought this for six dollars you can't it's nine dollars now y'all are paying nine dollars for this when i bought it back in 21 it stays good for three to five years something like that you know i paid six dollars for it because i saw it was coming so um yeah the perishable goods um a means to cook, you know, I got a little camping stove and all that stuff. You, you got all the food in the world, you have a means to cook. It. I mean, I guess you can eat it dry, cold or whatever, but you got to have a means to, uh, a means to do that. And of course, uh, I, I know we're in Africa. I'm a United States guy, so I'm a firearms guy, right? I'm a protection guy. Uh, learn how to protect yourself. If you don't have access to firearms, I mean, go take a jujitsu class, something, some kind of training with a weapon. Uh, I'm trying to think, uh, oh, on the prepper line, uh, metals, you know, different kinds of currency. You think, you know, if, if they're inflating away your uh, your uh, currencies, you know, you got to have uh, gold and silver and or cryptocurrencies to hedge that. Um, if there's anything good, I think that about covers.
others to the big stuff. But yeah, that's um again, I, I think I've said it five times now, like sovereignty. I'm big on like as a man, there's something in my soul that doesn't want to have to rely on other people. And I think we all have it, whether we tap into it or not. I think there's just a sovereignty, like we we want to be able to provide for ourselves and we don't want to have to rely on somebody else for that. So I guess I don't know. I think that's a big piece of me. And it's so funny that you, you just mentioned talking in real time and seeing the, the thought process. And it's just like, it's, a, it's like I'm talking, talking to a therapist. Like I found, I just found that deep down inside of me, there's this huge drive for self-sovereignty and um, knowing how to do things so I don't have to rely on other people to do it. Um, that's funny. I was going to mention too, like um, it's so important to talk. It's, it's so important to have these conversations with people. Um, you know, uh, I think men's groups are, we're, we're sort of, you're seeing men's groups develop right now, but I still think we're like wicked early on the men's groups. Like, I think it's going to blow up. People are just finally understanding the importance of a uh, brotherhood and talking about things that matter other than sports and weather, right? Like talking about things that matter with other people who are willing to talk about that. Like, it's just, it's so um, powerful to, put your ideas out there and you know i'm taking stuff from you you're taking stuff from me you know twitter we're stealing stuff constantly out of there but it's i really do every conversation i have every full-blown conversation i have with somebody face to face i'm, I'm taking something away they're taking something away so it's like to I, I guess i would say to anybody who's on twitter or social media and you're spectating you know yes you're learning stuff you're taking stuff away connect please connect with people dude. it's just so much more powerful and real so i uh you know i'm a fan of uh connecting with people you know locally all around the globe just do it connect and talking about that like building community uh, i mean you and you've touched on it already like the other day i saw that uh you had um hired out like the gym and you know like we're talking about a, a, like this big like massive open space with those kind of like almost bouncy floors and like yeah um, like gym boxes and all that sort of stuff and and then you know and, and I was like I wonder if there's a place here that I can do that because you know I live in Brazil and I was like I, I think that would be flipping cool if, if I did that you know if I stole that that idea of Don's and and got some sort of local guys and parents involved with that um so I think that's you know the ripple effect of what you're doing, you know, um, just by, by spreading the, the, all the stuff that you're doing. Um, but you know, that's also, I guess, morphed for you now, um, into your Friday night fun nights where you, I mean, it seems like you have so many kids around. Um, and, and I'm like, man, when I go to America, I'm going to make sure I'm in West Virginia on a Friday night. Cause I want to be at Don's, Don's <laughs> house, but so I mean, what you're doing there is really amazing. And, and I think, um, you know, it, it's, it's a, such a valuable thing, you know, talking about making yourself valuable, what you're doing there is like really making yourself valuable as a, as someone in the community. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, and this is still small compared to what I'd like to do and like to see, but, um, to, to yourself and anyone listening, please steal the idea, please steal it. You know, if, if this is, if this can take off, I mean, if this can become a global thing, just a bunch of dads, like, hey, let's just get dads. Like, the world would be a much better place. So that's exactly part of, like, when, when I started this whole thing, that was part of me saying, what can I do? What can I do? What can I show people that might make the world a better place? And that that's one of those things. Um, and then, um, like you said, to, to, to be here on a Friday night, I, I took a video the other day of uh, a buddy of mine was riding. I got an adult, you know, big, big wheel, an adult's big wheel, right? And this dude was riding on this big wheel, big wheel with his kid. The kid was on a little one. And this dude's just ripping this thing around, drifting corners and stuff. But the smile on his face, Gareth, the smile on his face, the smile on some of these adults' faces when we get into a heated nerf battle or watching adults play dodgeball. I'm telling you what, like it is tapping into a part of them that has not seen any activity for a very long time. It's talk, you know, it's tapping into that kid's soul, you know, and, and like I said about defaulting to yes, you know, your kid jumps in the creek. Why shouldn't you go for it, dude? Like you're an adult, just 
just go for it. But yeah, the, the smiles I see on adults' faces, I, I mean, I don't want to say it's better than the kids, but it's right up there. And it, it really is. Um, so, but that is, that is my hope is for, for people to take this model. And I know two people off Twitter already have, and, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of interest and, and it doesn't have to be a gym. Um, I ran this out of my house when I first started this, I had three families and I just ran it in my house and in, in a, in the basement. Right. And um, we'd run around the house, house would get trashed, like we'd be mad at and all that stuff. But yeah, if you want your wife's support, make sure you clean up after these events. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started small and um, we're growing. I, I get um, anywhere between like, anywhere between six and 10. Maybe I've had as much as like 12 families or something like that. Like, it's not huge. It might look huge. It's, it's not that huge. It's, I'm, I'm just hoping to to grow it and um you know if i can grow it if i can monetize it i don't know if i can if i can i i charge people when i rent out the, the gym facility i do charge so that i can break even like i'm, I'm not trying to shell 175 us dollars out of my own pocket all the time like i do like hey let's just get this gym you guys reimburse me we'll break even we'll just do the thing like and that's the thing you can do that if there's any places by you just tell all the dads or whatever hey let's all go in on this thing all the time and you know nobody's out any money but we can just rent it out and have a good time but um you don't even need that i've had i've had a guy a guy ran it at his church there's a lot of churches with gymnasiums um i've run a few at my church um another guy ran it just an open field you know over at soccer field or something like that like you wouldn't believe what you wouldn't believe the limited amount of resources you can do this with because you just get a bunch of kids together and they just feed off one another's energy like i don't care if you had nothing but like a playground the kids are going to play tag and freeze tag and you get the adults roped in. The adults are good because they can sort of identify when the energy level is decreasing and they can be like, all right, new game. Let's go. Let's do something else. And they can just turn the whole thing around. Cause you know, the kids, they just want to play, but they can't monitor the energy levels and all that stuff like a kid can. And, and I, and I do that very well on those, uh, when something when it's dying, it's like, all right, let's change it up. Let's do something else. But, um, yeah, you wouldn't, you, you can't even imagine just the energy that the kids bring like you tell them you know you tell them you're just going to some whatever venue to play in an unstructured environment do whatever it is they want but don't hurt anybody dude they're just fired up they'll bring the energy right you, you can really do this anywhere you know, playground like i said like i look look i don't know if you've seen the tweet it was like last year or something um i brought a tote worth a full of dodgeballs and nerf guns and one of my friday nights i didn't have enough people committed to come i, I only had like one family that could come this is way back in the early day so I just, I said, well, let's meet at the playground. I brought a tote of Nerf guns and dodgeballs. And there are other kids, of course, playing at the playground. I just dropped them right in the center of the playground and just saw what happened. All the kids are swarming it. And it just turned into madness. Like, it cost, you know, I, I, I already owned it. It cost me nothing to do that. I already owned the, 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 the guns and you know, dodgeballs and stuff. But it literally, you know, I want, I want to do a lot more of that this year, too, probably. I, you know, mark my words, you know, hold me accountable. I want to go do a lot more of that stuff just randomly in public. Like, hey. You just happen to be here when a nerf battle erupted. So deal with it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's kind of cool. So yeah, my hope is that people steal the idea. I like that. So global dads, uh, Friday fun nights. Like, I mean, imagine that, hey, like guys checking in from, you know, from America, from Brazil, whatever, South Africa, UK, and like, like guys, yeah, this is us. Just, just send it on our WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? You like, know, what was cool is there was one, there was one Friday night and uh, a guy in Texas was running one and, um, you know, he, he said, Hey man, I'm a little anxious. Could use your prayers or whatever. And I was like, dude, I'll be running one the exact same time, dude. Like, I think you're an hour behind me or something. I'll be running one too. So we're going to be running this stuff at the same time. This is really cool. Like you said, global Friday nights, dads get together. Like, dude, dude, that's, that's powerful. I, it love, is, it. I love it. It is. It's awesome. But so just to kind of like start wrapping things up now, um, a question I'd like to ask everybody, um, what are like two books that have, almost sort of influenced your life or change your worldviews on, on things? Gareth, I haven't, other than, um, Jerry's book, um, I haven't, um, Jerry's book, Men of Grit, other than Men of Grit, uh, I haven't read a book in a long time. I don't like reading it. I'm weird. I know. I get it. I get it. No. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not big on, on reading i take i take a lot of most of my ideas are from twitter and my men's group and stuff like that 
But um, Jerry's Jerry's book was very good. Men of Grit was a very good book for, uh, he talks about men seeking comfort and um, what a disaster that's been for the world, uh, particularly men of the church. You know, we've all sort of uh, sought comfort and we're good with just providing a paycheck and uh, the wife pretty much runs the house. They turned over the pants to the woman and the wife and whatever, and they just sort of run things. They just sit back in the chair and drink the beer and whatever it is. But that book really speaks to that. And uh, I mean, I was sort of, I was already past that when, um, when I read it, it wasn't necessarily, I didn't, I don't know that I needed that message personally, but I read that because Jerry's a friend of mine. I was like, yo, this book is fire. Like, I was like, you really like, you're going to ruffle some feathers with this one. Like if you're reading that, it's pretty easy to be like, yo, he's talking about me. Like, like, I need to do something with this. So, and I know that's a big, that's a big message on Twitter too, but no, other than that, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a big um, book reader and I don't know why. I, mean, I read very fast. I guess I'm very fast. I don't, I don't really know why. I guess, uh, I don't know, like I said, I steal so much good content off Twitter and from, from other men and stuff like that. And again, it's having these conversations, like you and I having this conversation is probably every bit as valuable as reading a book. You know, because somebody else, you've already read the book and now you're telling me what's in the book. Um, I know um, Anthony Miglarino is in the uh, Fraternity of Excellence and he's read a library full of peaceful parenting books. So every time that man speaks, I listen, you know, and I listen good. And I don't know what books it is he's read, but um, he, when, when he speaks, all that, that whole information, the whole library comes out of his mouth and into my ears. So, um even even more so than books, you know, get involved, get engaged, talk to people. You know, you hear an idea on Twitter, you see it on social media, you want to know more, hit the little DM button or, or, or the reply button, you know, find out more. Don't be shy about it. You don't got to have like internet social anxiety, right? You just, you know, it's just a stranger on the internet. Hit the reply button and ask more about it. Find out. I mean, we're, we're all, one thing I've learned, we are all in this thing together, right? Uh, lasting change is not going to get affected on this earth if we're not all in this together. Iron sharpens iron. You know, we're, we're all, we're all in here together. I'm here to help other men. Um, you're doing the same with this. Like, let's pick each other's brains. Let's get better. Brilliant, bud. Where uh, can people get in touch with you if they want to sort of, you know, find out a little bit more? And uh, what are like what are you most excited about uh, in the future, either personally or business wise? Man, okay, so um, I've got a website called WakeUpCall.io, and uh, that is because uh, I was too cheap to pay for the .dot com, so I went for the .dot io Wake Up Call. And the premise, the name, the name there uh, sort of originated. Uh, I wasn't happy with the state of the world. As I said, when I had kids, like the world was dark, whatever. And I, and I, I kept saying over and over, the world needs a wake up call. We got to snap out of this thing. Right. So that's sort of where the name originated. And I, I got a blog out there. I sell some uh, merch. That's a little bit, uh, how do you say, uh, wake up based you know, some, some, uh, and the fed shirts. I got some motivational shirts out there, some fatherhood shirts, uh, you know, lead by example shirts, just, uh, I don't know. It's cool stuff that I wore. I, you know, I looked around and people weren't weren't doing the uh, didn't have the the stuff that I wanted to wear. So as a man, I was just like, whatever. I'll just build it. I'll just create it. Whatever. So um, there's that's out there. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Wake Up Call LLC, and that's my Twitter handle. You can find me out there. Um, that's about that's about it for that stuff. Um, what I'm most excited about. I mean, I'm excited about a lot. Of things. I got a lot. Of, Gareth, I got a lot. Of right now but um I'm, I'm i'm trying to put together a uh an accountability uh group for men to join if you need uh you know encouragement working out or getting your finance in order or anything like that me and another guy we're putting that together right now um I'm definitely excited about my friday fun nights i'm hoping that grows uh i'm excited about my presence on twitter you know we're growing every day a little bit making more friends and stuff like that uh, I'm working on building my church right now. Uh, the church had a uh, like sort of a mass exodus after the, the pandemic and all that stuff. People got comfortable not physically going. So I'm rebuilding. Uh, like I said, I'm on the board. I'm helping rebuild the children's program and also uh, just sort of um, building communications within the congregation, building community there, 
such that people are beating down the doors and like, yo, I want to come to this church. This church is awesome. So I'm building that. Of course, I'm building a ninja course in my backyard. I got no idea where that's going to go. I mean, that's honestly, I've already thought about it. I'm like, man, I could, if this thing goes viral, I'll just be like, oh, hey, for 10 grand, I'll come build this thing in your yard. You know what I mean? Like, I want that. That thing's going to be awesome. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, I don't know. I'm excited about everything, Gareth, man. Like, like things, are, things are good. You know, when you got a mission, a purpose, and, uh, you know, you're building. I'm just excited for where my kids are going. Every day my kids are older. I'm not one of those guys that's like, I want you to stay three years old forever. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Every day is new. Let's, we're doing new things. You know, you saw on Twitter, I bought my kid a sword. I bought him a bow. Like we're transitioning from stuffed animals into weapons. So that's cool. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Like, I don't know. I'm excited about it all. Here. It's, uh, it's uh, the, the world, you know, you can connect with people across the world. The world is, is smaller. Um, there's so many people doing cool things and it's encouraging. Um, I want to do cool things. I hope everybody wants to do cool things. Let's build some stuff. And I don't know, nothing's off limits. You don't have to just sit there with a nine to five. You can build something. You can leave a legacy. I just encourage everybody to uh, you know, full, full send it. You know, you got an idea, act on it. Don't wait. Don't wonder. Don't sit there and wonder, well, what if I did this? Just go, just go. You got my permission. Just go full send it. <laughs> full send. But last question is what does being ridiculously human mean to you? Um, I think being ridiculously human is, is embracing literally kind of what I was just talking about. Like, look, we're not, we're not, of course, government schools exist. So you might think that we're, made to just be internated and be little good little drones and factory workers but being ridiculously human to me means embracing our zest for life and our differences our strengths and whatever what we all bring to the table and i mean why why should we all be the same person why should we all say all right i'm gonna grow up get married have the kids get the job get the house that's it why should we quit there you know, let's let's build stuff. Let's build solutions. Let's get together. Let's talk. Let's discuss. I mean, I believe we're here to enjoy our relationships with one another. Like, why else are we here? I don't know. But um, you know, let's uh, let's break that introversion, that lack of confidence, the social anxiety. Let's be outgoing. Let's share ideas. Let's talk. Let's enjoy each other's company, and uh, let's let's be different and fully authentic. Put it on full send, man. I just wanted to say, like, Don, thanks so much for, for coming on the Ridiculously Human podcast, but uh, you, you're definitely like a very special type of human, like in, in a cool way, you know, like you you have a fantastic energy. Um, you, you just, what you're doing now, like the way you are building your community, um, getting people involved, um, how you take action, um, how you speak, um, how you challenge and push people like online, you know, like, I think it's, there's such a massive um, space for that. And people gravitate towards guys like you, you know, they, they gravitate towards the sort of high energy people. Um, so yeah, just wanted to say thanks for everything you're doing. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, keep doing what you're doing, brother. And uh, the, that's global dads Friday night, fun night is a, is a thing. I can, I can just feel it. <laughs> That's awesome. I certainly appreciate you having me. You know, the more people I can reach, the better. And um, I can do that. And uh, now as we close out, I got to go, uh, I got to go build community at the church. I got to go build a vacation Bible school program uh, that I'm involved in somehow. So whatever. Sweet. <laughs> I love it.